Hello there, this is Gary Short with Gibraltar Software. Welcome to this video on getting started with ASP.NET and Loop Desktop. In this video I'm going to walk you through connecting Loop to this default ASP.NET application targeting the 4.5 framework. An easy way to connect to Loop is via the wizard on the start page. The wizard can be found over here on the right hand side of the page. Launch it and a dialog will appear allowing you to select your application's project file. On the first page we're going to accept the default value. On the next page we get the opportunity to fill in values for product, application and version numbers. It's important that we do this as it will help Loop categorise the session in a meaningful way. If you're having trouble working out what values to use, it helps to think of product as Microsoft Office and application as being Word or Excel for example. Alternatively, if you don't have product families, you can put in your department name in the product field. On this page we'll accept the defaults, remembering to input your email address. This will allow Loop to email session information to you. On this next page I'm connecting to our private Loop server. You don't need to worry about this at this point, we'll cover it in future videos. We'll also accept the default values on the remaining pages. And with that the wizard is complete, so let's return to Visual Studio. As you can see, the wizard has added the Gibraltar dependencies. It will be up to you to manage these in a team environment, either by using NuGet or by having everyone install Desktop Loop. We can see the wizard has added our product information to the web.config file, and we can edit this if necessary. Now in ASP.NET, loop sessions live and die with the underlying application, and so the session won't get sent until the application ends or is recycled. Jumping into the code behind page for the global ASAX file, we can see the code that you need to include to have the session sent on an error, regardless of whether the application has ended or not. Now to demonstrate adding our own logging to the application, I've added two buttons, one labelled make purchase, the other labelled throw error. In the click event for the first, I've added an anonymous type to hold some purchase information and logged an information event based upon it. In the second click event, I throw two exceptions, the first handled, the second unhandled. Note the use of the dot delimited category label in the log calls. We'll look at the effect of this later. Running the application and clicking around in the links, you can see this is a standard out of the box application. Opening loop, the session events will be displayed in the live session viewer as they happen. Let me place the web pages and the viewer side by side so that you can see the effect of the events we log. As I click on the Make Purchase button, we can see these events posted in the Live Viewer. Clicking on the Throw Error button results in the Handled error being recorded, followed by the yellow screen of death as we hit the Unhandled exception, which is also posted in the Live Viewer. As we included the code to send sessions on an Unhandled exception, our session events are now located in the appropriate folder. Opening the session here gives us access to all of the analytics presented by Loop. The first thing to note is how the dot delimited category string we used in our log calls has resulted in the meaningful categorization of our events. Let's view only these for the moment. Here we can see detailed information on our events, including file and line number where they were called, as well as a view into the file itself. Let's turn on page level events to see the information regarding the unhandled exception that we threw. Again, the same detailed information is captured by Loop. Switching to the metrics view, we can see the wide array of metrics that Loop makes available to us, thanks to the fact that the Loop agent has been registered as an ASP.NET Health Monitor. Let's finish by looking at the information that's available via the page hit metric. This records data about every dynamic page request for your site. Let's view the running response times by clicking Total Request Duration. And that about wraps it up for this video. It's time to go and check out the next video in this series on using Loop with ASP.NET. Thanks very much for watching.